Hi, this is your pastor, Father Engel, and once again, welcome to St. Joseph. Uh, for this week, I would like to uh, review some liturgical uh, adaptations uh, done by the Diocese of San Jose, and that uh, this, this has been revised in relation to the protocols that we must follow in connection with the COVID-19. So here we have, and I'm going to read them for you, uh, the Diocese live streams Sunday Masses uh, on the Diocese on Facebook page, that is www.facebook.com slash Diocese San Jose at 10 o'clock a.m. in English. And in our case at St. Joseph, we continue having live stream Mass at 10 o'clock in the morning, and you're all invited to attend. Other Masses are broadcast each Sunday at 5 a.m. at the Eternal Word Television Network, or EWTN, a Catholic channel. Now, regarding singing, this is what the diocese is telling us. Singing is an essential part of our prayer to God, and it unites us and edifies us as His people and can move us towards a stronger love for Him and our faith. However, in compliance with state and county orders, which prohibit singing during religious, religious gatherings due to the increased risk of virus transmission, singing and chanting outdoors are suspended until further notice. One cantor singing in a separate room is allowed for live stream in their masses only, but these must be close to the public. At St. Joseph, um, we have one who does this for us, and that's Denis, who plays the piano for us and sings also for us, but uh, you understand that he stays at the choir lofts very far from the altar, so that he does the uh, singing there and playing the piano for the, for the Mass, and I thank Denis for doing that. Now, it is understood that this will be a painful change. It will be essential to catechize, as the diocese says, that we must catechize you that this change is, is due to the increased risk of virus transmission. Because it says here that even when we are all wearing face coverings, there remains the possibility of that droplets can be spread when someone does not wear a face covering correctly. We all yearn for the day when we can resume our singing with a new joy and celebration. Also, the use of instrumental music in liturgies continues to be allowed and is encouraged. Now, regarding other sacraments, the diocese wants to tell us again that the sacramental celebrations may take place outdoors only and under limited circumstances. Indoor gatherings are suspended until further notice by order of the County of Santa Clara and the State of California. Again, participants must wear face coverings and maintain physical distance of at least six feet apart. I'm very grateful to all the volunteers of St. Joseph because uh, they're very keen about following protocols and following rules and regulations regarding uh, uh, our gatherings. And uh, I'm, read, I'm truly very grateful for what they do for us at St. Joseph. Also, uh, persons of high-risk categories should be asked to stay home for their safety and join the celebration online if possible. Now, uh, sacraments of initiation must take place in the outdoors. For RCIA, the Liturgical Commission may suggest guidelines for pastors as liturgies will need to be adopted. There's also a directive regarding funerals. Funeral homes are now ready to work with parishes on outdoor funerals, as long as county protocols and the limits of the number of participants are observed. Regarding confessions, persons desiring, desiring to make a confession should contact their parish office to make an appointment with a priest. Now, the sacramental nature of confession requires that it must be made in person, not through telephone, no? not through email. No? <laughs> However, 
uh, at St. Joseph, we have our weekly confessions. At 4 o'clock in the afternoon on Saturdays, we have one in English and one in Spanish. So yeah, there's an availability for confession for all of you here. Now, when hearing confessions, always wear a face covering, meaning to say wear your mask when you come to confess. When the sacrament of reconciliation is not possible, for example, to a patient who is isolated or in quarantine, that person can make an act of perfect contrition. An act of perfect contrition always has been a part of our Catholic tradition. God is always present to us even when the sacrament of reconciliation is not possible. While priests cannot give absolution to a penitent over the phone, he can use the phone to give a blessing and even guide a person through an act of perfect contrition. This is provided the person expresses faith in and love of God above all things and resolves firmly to make sacramental confession as soon as possible and all her or his sins, even mortal sins, are forgiven. Now, regarding confirmation, as you all know that the Bishop of San Jose, Bishop Oscar Cantu, gave pastors and all the priests, including parochial vicars, the, uh, an extraordinary delegation to confirm, to administer the sacrament of confirmation to those who will receive it this year. However, a confirmation retreats are postponed until further notice. Regarding weddings, all persons, save for the couple, must wear face coverings and maintain a distance of six feet apart from one another in a wedding ceremony. Okay? Regarding anointing of the sick and hospital procedures, the directive says that before we go to the parishioner's home, we are required to ask the per if whether the person has symptoms or has been diagnosed with COVID-19, okay? So that a visits are to be made to the sick and dying only for emergency purposes. So it says here, for emergencies only. So that's an idea of the sick, viaticum or baptism or confession. So, when receiving a request for visit, we are to verify with a family member or hospital or nursing home personnel that the call is for emergency. If possible, we, we try to find out whether the person's medical condition requires special care or isolation. It is especially important if the patient is at home where sanitary condition may be uncertain and there, be, there are no protective masks or gloves or gowns, that uh, we are guaranteed that we are both safe, you know, the patient and us priests who go there to make a visit. Hospitals and skilled nursing facilities are the highest risk places of exposure to coronavirus. So additionally, the sanitary condition of at private homes will vary greatly. Hospitals had a system or have a system in place and may be able to provide you with personal protective equipment called PPE to wear, including a face mask, gown, and disposable gloves. However, some hospitals are experiencing shortages of some protective gear, such as face masks. And the situation at the skilled nursing facilities or private homes may be similar or worse. So far, those are the things that I'd like to emphasize regarding these uh, updated uh, directives coming from the, from the diocese in connection with all the protocols that we have to follow regarding the virus. Now, if you may ask me, why are we talking about those? You know, um, there are some who complain why our, you know, our churches are closed. You know that, that uh, in the entire country, a lot of Catholics, they even sent letters to bishops asking bishops to open the, the churches. But one thing that I would like to tell you, brothers and sisters in Christ, believe it or not, I'm pretty sure that Jesus is also concerned about our physical well-being. He's concerned about our well-being. Now, 
the gospel this Sunday that we are going to read from Matthew chapter 14, verses 13 to 21. It speaks about the concern of Jesus about our physical well-being. When he saw the vast crowd following him, it says there in verse 14, he had compassion on them. In other parts of the gospel, it says he was moved with pity. So here you are, the human Jesus who is as concerned about our physical well-being. Not only the spiritual part or spiritual need of ourselves, but also of our physical well-being. What did he do when he saw them and was moved with compassion? He told them, give them something to eat. One thing sure about this uh, miracle that he did, he did not do it alone. What did he do? He asked them, give me, some, give me five loaves and two fish, as they were presenting to him these five loaves and two fish, because that's all that the apostles had. When Jesus told them, give them something to eat, and they said, there's nothing, there's, we have nothing here except five loaves and two fish. Then he asked for those and did a miracle, multiplied the five loaves and two fish into a lot of uh, food to feed 5,000 men, not including women and children who were there too. So if you could imagine about 15,000 perhaps who went to eat there, and Jesus made a miracle out of the five loaves and two fish. But he did that because someone brought to him those material things, five loaves and two fish, five loaves of bread and two fish. So brothers and sisters in Christ, I guess that uh, this should alleviate us from our misery at this moment of the pandemic. I know that's not easy. You know? I know that we are all um, anxious as to when will this end. However, we believe in the miracle of Jesus. We believe that Jesus is with us. We believe that Jesus knows our needs. He understands us. He commiserates with us. But he needs to make a miracle. A miracle during this time of pandemic. And you are needed to be part of that miracle. God, Jesus, is calling you to participate in his work of creating miracles, making miracles to the people of God through your compassion, to your helping hand, to your smile, to your loving heart, to your forgiving heart. That's what Jesus is asking us all today, to be instruments for that miracle to happen. And there's one thing that we need. We need generosity and sacrifice two important virtues that we must do. We need to be generous with our time, with our talent, generous with our, with everything that we have for the sake of the other. That's what we need. Mom and dad, be generous to your children when it comes to your time. This time of pandemic, our precious moments to be with the family that we did not experience before the pandemic. Students, young people, now that you, you can't go to places where you want to go the way you wanted, the way you used to do, now is the moment to speak with your friend. You have your cell phone, speak with them. Be generous in listening and speaking with them. Some of your friends want to see you, to be with you, and yet it's not possible. And yet your generous heart, just by calling them, can alleviate them from their suffering. So here, we have to sacrifice our own interest for the sake of the others. And that would be a miracle for others to see. And we become an instrument for others to change their lives and see God in themselves. Amen. And I'll give you the blessing. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Stay safe. Bye.